Helping to provide more insight is Gerald Feierstein. He's a former U.S. ambassador and once served as deputy counsel general in Jerusalem. Currently, he's the director of Arabian Peninsula Affairs with the Middle East Institute. Uh, you spent four decades in foreign service, held posts in Jerusalem, Lebanon, Oman, and Saudi Arabia, just to name a few. So you certainly know this area. You know these issues. I suspect you've probably witnessed just about everything that you can imagine. So frame it that way for us. What's your sense about what we're seeing in the last few days there? Well, I think that the, very clearly this is a, uh, a dramatic increase in the level of violence uh, in, in the region. Uh, you're absolutely right. I happened to be serving in Jerusalem when the Second Intifada started in, uh, in 2001, 2000, 2001. Uh, so uh, we've, we've seen this before, uh, but this is, this is something different. Uh, and, and it's a demonstration, and I think that this is something that we really need to focus on. It is a demonstration that that um, states no longer have a monopoly on on violence, uh, that uh, the ability of a terrorist group like Hamas uh, to launch this kind of complex attack using drones, using paragliders, using other kinds of sophisticated technologies uh, is uh, really different, and it's going to change. Uh, the shape not only of conflict, uh, but also of interstate relations in the region going forward. Well, let me dig a little bit deeper with that, because uh, U.S. President Biden condemned what he described as the sheer evil of Hamas. Uh, and I heard a former high-ranking U.S. security official saying today that this is a new Hamas. Uh, we know in the past they've carried out abductions, suicide bombings, and the like, but really nothing at this scale, as you just said. So why and why now? Well, I think that there are a number of, of different uh, different explanations, and, and obviously uh, this is all speculative. Uh, Hamas hasn't explained themselves, but uh, but I think that it's accumulation of of events. Uh, the situation in Gaza is and has been desperate for many many years, uh, uh, really since about 2005, 2006, uh, and that is cumulative and uh, and ensures that Hamas will be able to recruit uh, followers. Uh, but we've also seen the overall situation between Israel and the Palestinians deteriorate over the last year, increasing levels of violence, uh, West Bank and, and Israel itself, uh, anti-Palestinian violence on, on the uh, uptick uh, from uh, particularly Israeli settlers, uh, assaults on uh, the Al-Aqsa uh, mosque compound, on the uh, Temple Mount, the Haram al-Sharif, uh, has, um, has uh, been uh, a, a serious concern for Muslims all over the world. So, so the Hamas is drawing on what is a growing uh, sense of anger and frustration throughout the region about Israel and the inability or unwillingness of the international community uh, to really do anything to address this deteriorating situation. And there's no discounting the horror of uh, what happened this weekend, but we're seeing buildings flattened in Gaza. Uh, we know that more innocent civilians on both sides will die in the days and months to come. How dire will things become? I mean, you mentioned uh, you know, you've seen this movie before, perhaps not as violent as this version we're seeing right now, but I mean, how bad are things going to get? Well, uh, you know, and, and uh, especially if, uh, if the Israelis do, as everyone expects that they're going to do, go in on the ground, uh, go uh, into Gaza City, which is one of the densest uh, populations on the face of the earth, uh, the, uh, the potential for catastrophic losses on the side of the Palestinians is, is huge. And, and, you know, I, I think it was unfortunate that the president only spoke about um, Israeli lives and the importance of standing with Israel. We understand what his motivation might be, uh, but Palestinian lives are just as important and just as, as dear to their families. And I think that it was important for the president to speak uh, to the broader issue of the need to bring peace to both Israelis and Palestinians, not just Israel. And, and let me go there uh, with my final question to you. Secretary of State Blinken, heading to Israel as someone who devoted uh, your entire life to diplomacy. What needs to happen on the diplomatic front to bring an end to the bloodshed? Well, I think that, uh, you know, unfortunately, we're probably in a moment where, uh, where the Israelis are going to 
uh, to pursue a military strategy. I don't think that there's any deterring them from, uh, from that, especially as long as Hamas holds hostages. Uh, but I think we're at a point where there needs to be a, a peaceful horizon, uh, that the administration needs to be speaking to the day after. And, uh, and to the importance of redoubling efforts uh, to address Palestinian grievances uh, and to really put the peace process back on track. They were working with the Saudis. The Saudis had established a, a Palestinian perspective very clearly in their negotiations with Israel. That's a step forward. Uh, but there needs to be a direct Israel-Palestine uh, negotiation and resolution. Gerald Firestein, Distinguished Senior Fellow on U.S. Diplomacy, Director of Arabian Peninsula Affairs for the Middle East Institute. Thank you so much for joining us from Philadelphia. Appreciate it. Thank you.